Okay, well, my name is Cassie, Cassie Miller. Um, my husband is uh, Brandon Miller. He's one. He's the executive pastor on staff here. I have been at this church at Family Life for over 20 years. I've seen a, you know, just I've seen a lot of people and um, no, I've seen a lot of people. That's weird. That's not really what I meant to say. Um, what I meant to say was I I know a lot of people that have you know come through 20 years ago and then you see them like in the last year come back and I just I love people I love God's people I love seeing God's people grow you know God takes us in different seasons and some people you know will be here for a little while like when I was 14 years old in the youth group there were people I knew back then and then 20 years later I get to see these people loving Jesus having kids and it's just it's wonderful I love the body of Christ I guess that's what I'm trying to say I love this church I'm very thankful for this church. This is my home. And um, I am honored. I'm going to cry. I got my tissue. <laughs> I'm so honored to be here. I'm honored to be a part of such a wonderful home. Um, what's a wonderful staff, wonderful people. And I really, as I was on my way to church this morning, I was crying because I'm like, God. He lo- I feel like he, I know he loves me so much, but I feel so um, privileged and honored to just be here before you sharing his word with you. Because when we get when we know that we um, get the opportunity to 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 speak to God's children, to speak to his daughters, I'm always like, God, what do you want them to hear? What do you want to say to them? Because it's individual. I'm speaking one message, but to everyone, we're going to all get something different from it. And I just feel so honored that I get to do this. So I just wanted to say that. I'm honored, and I thank you for coming this weekend. All right, so let's get started. Um, okay, so this weekend, we talked about the, the theme is arise, nope, awaken, arise, activate. And so I get the opportunity to coach. I feel like I'm a coach. I kind of feel like a teacher because I have like resources right here. I'm not just preaching off my papers, which I normally like to do. Um, but I've got my Bible, my book, a book, you know, and then other notes. So I, I feel teacherish right now. But also what's inside of me is the coach. Today I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be your coach and coach y'all, um, to get going in what the gifts, because that's, you know, apparently what God wants to stir up this weekend, but to um, get going in the gifts that God has designed in you from the beginning. All right? So let's awaken. That's what Tanya spoke about last night. And um, the definite, I like how I'm a definition person too. So I love that you like broke that you gave us the definition. And so for awaken, um, the definition is to stop sleeping and make someone aware. She talked about how every one of us possesses gifts. Um, they are inherent and irrevo- irrevocable, which means they're from God, and no one or nothing can take those gifts away. And she um, also said seasons may change, but gifts do not. They just get refined in the season we're in. And I told her afterwards, that was for me. That, you know, that that little piece right there. She also said, when you discover your purpose, you discover your gifts. And the the whole um the whole message was all about the gift that God designed in us. And so her goal and part of her goal and purpose last night was to wake that up to wake up, wake us up to realize what God has put inside of us that is so valuable and so precious. Then in the workshops, I was only in Sister Linda's workshop, um, but the theme there was arise, getting us women to see, because we wake up just like in the morning, you get up, you wake up. Well, and then, then you have to like get out of your bed and stand up. So the workshops were about that stand up, that rise up, arise. And then now I'm going to talk to you about activate, which the definition for activate 
is to make something active or operative. In other words, it's to switch on, to turn on, to start up, and to get going. So you wake up in the morning, you rise up out of bed, and you get going for your day. That's not just to do it in your everyday. That's that's what God wants us to do, he wants us to get going. Colossians 2, uh, verse 6 and 7 says, And now just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. So activate us to take action, in a, a, another way to say it. And this scripture, I love it because it speaks of action. And so I want to um, I want to go over the the action words. I'm so sounding like a teacher right now. Go over, you know. It's because because I, I schooled my kids this year, so I think it's just coming out. Um, okay, the scripture speaks of actions. Here are the actions in the scripture. Accepted. Continue to follow. Let your roots grow. Let your lives be built. Faith will grow. You will overflow. You see the theme? Activate. Get active. Movement. We were not created just to do nothing. We were not created to sulk forever. We were not, rest is an amazing thing and we probably should do more resting. But, and that, that, so I'm not saying don't rest. I'm just saying we were created to move and, and do and, and turn on and start up and get going. And so why is this important to our lives? Have any of you wondered that? Like, why is she talking to us about this? Maybe, y'all, by this point, you're like, oh, I'm ready. Tell me. I know why we should talk about this. But maybe some of you are like, oh, why are we talking about getting, moving? Why do we need to switch on, turn up, start, get going? Well, let me tell you why. Uh, in November, <laughs> glad I got my tissue. I don't think I could ever get up here and, and speak without crying. It just happens. That's just, this is who I am. Um, okay, so in November, as many of you know, and, and Tanya mentioned her last night, <laughs> but um, my mother-in-law, her name is Miss Gail, Gail Miller. For those of you who this is your first time at this church, you're like, who is this Gail woman? Okay, she is the closest person to Jesus I've ever known, and it just so happened that she was my mother-in-law. And so I am a very blessed woman, but she passed away and, um, she was so many things to so many people. I'm telling you, I still, I mean, people are continuing to tell me how much she impacted their lives. She was a woman who thought about you. She is a woman who reached out to you. She would send texts. She knew so many people's birthdays. She would text on your birthday. She would text, you know, um, just when she thought about you, when she was praying about you. After she got diagnosed with cancer and was feeling very ill, she was still having women in her home to counsel them, and they didn't even know she had cancer. I mean, I'm like, you don't have to do that. And she's like, oh, no, you know, like, this is what God has created me to do. I'm going to do it. I'm having a good day. And if she had a bad day, she rescheduled. She didn't can't. She rescheduled. So she loved the Lord, spent a lot of time with the Lord. Um, she was just amazing. Okay, so when y'all hear Miss Gail being mentioned, for those of you who don't know her, that is who she is. So anyway, she passed away. And... um you know, I, I had conversations with people and there were people who were like, man, why, why would God allow her to go? Like, we want her here. And I know that every one of us in here has probably felt that way about someone who has passed on, right? Um, a couple of years, or gosh, it's probably been like four or five years ago now, um, Brother Brad's sons, he was one of the pastors here. And he passed away. And I remember thinking, like, God, why him? Why one of the good ones? Like, this may sound very wrong, but I'm like, can you take one of the people who will never serve you and who's out there hurting people? Like, just can you take them and leave the good ones? Like, I really had those thoughts because I'm like, if they're not going to serve you ever, just take them. 
and leave the good ones here. And maybe some of you have thought that too. But you know, the Lord spoke to me and it was powerful. And what the Lord said was that, or he just informed me, you know, sometimes we say the Lord said, like, I don't remember word for word, but I remember the general idea of what God spoke to me. And he let me know that the greatness and the legacy that these people possess that made such an impact in our lives, they are not to pass away with these people, but they are to be passed on to us who are still alive, who are still breathing, who are still functioning. It is supposed to be passed on. The torch that they had, that they carried, that made them so amazing is to be passed to us and we are supposed to carry that torch. We're going to grab that torch and we're going to carry that torch. I also think about our founding pastor, Brother Francis Martin. He, he started this church in, in a little building and I don't even know all the details of everything. I've heard it so many times, but still don't exactly remember it all. But he seriously started this church, built it, to, to what it is today. Pastor Todd came on, but you know what I was thinking? You know, Pastor Francis, he poured into the families of this church. He poured into our community. He poured into other communities and around. I mean, he traveled and did so much. And you know, he did not do all of that for nothing. He didn't build this church family life for nothing. He didn't do it to just pass the time. He didn't do it to just give him something to do and keep him busy. He did it so it would be passed on. His goal was never for this church to pass on with him. He wanted it to be passed on for generations and generations and generations. And I feel honored and privileged that I get to be a part of that. And so again, the reason why activating is so important is because it's time. It's time to take that torch that these people have passed on, and it's time to carry that torch. You know, if we look around the world, look around schools, look around, you know, even our homes or maybe even our own hearts, workplace, the world needs the light. The world needs Jesus. And guess who has that light? It is us. We have the light. We, because we have Jesus and sister, sister Linda, she hit that out of the park. She was talking about, man, it, it was good. I'm just telling you, they recorded it. So you, I would suggest everybody listen to it. She, she just did a, a great job. Um, I, I'm sure the other ladies did too. And so I plan on listening to all the workshops. Uh, but as I was in sister Linda, she did talk about arising, to arise and shine. And the scripture, Matthew 5, 14, 16, that I already had written down when you was saying that, I was getting so excited. It says, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. And I had this in my notes. And when she said it, I about wanted to jump up, but it's time to shine y'all. It is time. It is time to shine. Romans 13, 11 says, this is all the more urgent for, you know, how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. You know, throughout the Bible, there is a sense of urgency when it comes to salvation and getting right with the Lord and, and our pursuit with our relationship with the Lord. It's laced throughout the New and Old Testament. And so this sense of urgency causes, and I see it in the body of Christ in this, uh, in this, is this season, in this time. It's like, there are so many, you know, listening to messages and just talking to other pastors and leaders. It's like, man, it's time. Let's get up. Let's get going because the time is now. It's time to get going. It's time to start something up and it's time to switch on. It's time to flip the switch. 
Y'all, there's a switch, guys, ladies. It's time to flip that switch. Okay, so now we know why we need to activate, why we need to get going. So I want to talk about four things that we should activate. And look, there are many more. Uh, it's like sometimes when you when you share in something, you're like, oh, there's so much to say. But as I prayed about it, I came, uh, you know, me and the Lord came up to four. We came down, came down to four, I should say. So before I start telling you this, this is what I want you to do. I want you to, to, to hear the Holy Spirit during this message. And so as I'm talking about what we need to activate, if the Holy Spirit speaks something specific to you, which my prayer is that he would, my desire is that when, when everyone leaves here, that the Holy Spirit will have spoken something so distinct and uh, to you and specific just for you. I want you to write it down. If you pick up your phone, type it in your notes or use your pen and the, the notes we gave you, write it down. Because the, in order to move, we need to know where we're going. And so when God speaks to us and says, hey, activate this in your life, boom, write it down. So you know where you're going to get going. Okay, but the first thing I want to talk about is activate healthy thoughts. Proverbs 23, 7 in the Amplified says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Basically what that's saying is we are what we think. That's what that's saying. So let me ask you this. What thoughts have you been activating? Take a moment and think about it. What thoughts have I been activating? Give you a minute to stew on that. What I want to, I want to first talk about with thoughts, um, where they come from. Now, Brother Francis Martin wrote a book called Hung by the Tongue. It's a little bitty book. I even brought it because I'm going to read out of it. This is the book. Okay. It's little. You can stick it in your purse. And you can read it at the doctor's office, read it in some downtime, at work, on a lunch break. I would really suggest that everyone in here gets this book because it is life changing. And so I got a little bit out of his book because it's so good. I'm a, I'm a firm believer is I don't have to always be the originator with something good. I just want to be a communicator of something good. So like Bishop T.D. Jake says, if I taste something and it's good, I'm going to feed it to you. I don't need to come up with it all because I surely, surely can't, but I'm going to pass it on. That's, that's, that's what I like to do. So, all right. He says there's three in his book, in Brother Francis's book, he said there's three, uh, there's three places that thoughts come from. The first place is our five senses. Taste, hear, touch, sight, and smell. Let me ask you a question. When you walked in here and you saw these, these little sets right here, and you saw all these gifts under the blanket, or under the little sheet. What was your thoughts? Were you, yeah, what's in there? You're thinking, what's in there? Right? You just seeing this right here caused you to have a thought, right? That's where our thoughts come from. When you walk outside and you smell the crawfish, what you gonna think? <laughs> I get in my belly, right? You're gonna be ready to eat. But all of our five senses, when I walked out, Last night, and then my husband's like, yeah, it's cold. It's going to be cold tomorrow. I'm like, oh, I already picked out my outfit. I'm not submitting to the weather. I'm wearing my spring outfit. I bought this kimono in January and was waiting for today to wear it. So, like, I I was, no, I'm not submitting to the feelings of the weather today. Actually, I brought me a sweater for when we go outside. But anyway, just saying, okay, every time we, we feel we touch, we smell, we see something. It activates thoughts in our minds, right? Okay, the second place that thoughts come from is the devil, the adversary, our enemy. Um, in John, in the book of John, it talks about how the devil put the thoughts of betrayal in Judas's heart. It, he, the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So let me, I, I just think, let me say that one more time. The enemy, the enemy, of God, the enemy of us, he comes to steal from us, to kill us, our dreams, our gifts, our everything that is wonderful, and he comes to destroy everything that he can't kill. 
Okay, that's what the enemy does. So when we have thoughts that are destructive, when we have thoughts that are of murder and, and death, let's just be honest, because we, we do, we're human. Um, and when we have, when we can just, when we are thinking about things that are stealing away from us, like those are from the enemy. So we need to be aware so we know what, what we have, so we will be able to determine what to do with those thoughts. I always tell, like when I'm talking to my kids, and it's so simple, but I'm like, when you have a thought and it makes you feel yucky about yourself, you need to ask, where does that thought come from? And it goes for me (laughs) as a 36-year-old and it goes for everyone in here. When we have those thoughts that are making us feel like super yucky about ourselves, because when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit doesn't come and condemn you. The Holy Spirit comes and brings correction and says, hey, babe, you're doing this wrong. And you need to, you need to make it right. The enemy comes and he lies to us and says, you are the wrong that you're doing. You are a liar. You are a thief. You are an adulterer. Those words are from the devil. Okay. So just so we're clear, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak to us with words that are not from the Lord. Okay. So the third place, the third place thoughts come from is the Holy Spirit. Yay. Okay, um, Galatians 5, and 23 says, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Do you know that we get to choose the kind of thoughts that we activate? Like it is seriously our choice. We can't control a thought that comes to our head because obviously between our five senses, the devil and the Holy Spirit, these thoughts are going to come, but we can control the thoughts we activate. Um, I want to read a little, is it an excerpt or an insert? Excerpt, right? That would be the word. Fancy word. I'm trying to be fancy. It's not working. Okay. I'm going to read a little something from Brother Francis's book. I should have asked that before, but I'd have probably messed it up anyway because I get all the words. I I mess up words. Huh? Excerpt? Oh, look. Thank you. I'm going to read an excerpt (laughs) from Brother Francis' book, ladies. Okay. Um, He says, if you do not let the thought become imaginations, they will not become strongholds. Because the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thoughts are the original ideas. Imaginations are the image. And strongholds are a result of the thoughts that come to reality. Listen to this. The stronghold is what controls you if you allow it to. Jesus has given you authority over your thinking, but you have to take authority and stay in authority. It is an act of your will. An imagination is an intent to do something about what you have been thinking. A stronghold is when the choice is not yours anymore. So what happens is, is we get a thought in our head and we choose what to do with it. Do we hold on to this thought? Is this a thought that's going to honor God? That's going to be healthy for me, my family, my friends. If it's not, we need to dismiss. But what happens is, is if we keep thinking on it, then it becomes an imagination because we start, like we put it on the screen of our mind, right? And then what happens is once we keep watching the screen of our mind with those imaginations, it becomes a stronghold because then you can't help yourself. Like the Oreos that were in my pantry. I'm doing this boot camp thing and I'm like, okay, no Oreos till the summer. No cookies. And the kids were like, mom, let's, let's get a treat. And we had a friend over for it. One of their little friends over for the weekend. So I like to try to be somewhat of the cool mom. And so I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy cookies. I wanted those Oreos so bad. And instead of just like putting in the pantry and forgetting about them, I really kept thinking about, okay, what day am I done the boot camp? And when am I going to be able to eat the Oreos? And man, like I could probably just lick the icing and maybe not eat the chocolate or maybe scrape the chocolate. I wonder what has more calories or like less cal- Like, cause, you know, maybe I could just do one side, like break it apart and the side with the least amount of icing I'll actually eat, right? And then I was thinking about it so much. I was like, well, let me eat a rice cake. 
<laughs> because maybe if I eat this rice cake, it's going to take away that. It was a chocolate rice cake that I'm allowed to have. So I'm like, maybe it's going to take away that chocolate craving. I ate an Oreo. <laughs> After I ate a chocolate rice cake, and then I ate another chocolate rice cake with peanut butter, and then I ate some chicken, and then I had a couple pretzels dipped in Nutella, (laughs) and then I had the Oreo. I just, I'm like, well, I'm obviously going to eat everything in the house, so I'm going to have the Oreo. I had it. It became a stronghold in my life (laughs) that day. (laughs) Yeah. So that's been... (laughs) You know, that's what happens. It, it, it surely, surely does. So we got to take the thought, right? Okay. Getting myself off track. Let's see. Okay. Um, Romans 12, 2 says, so we're going to get off of the Oreos and go back to more spiritual things. <laughs> Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. And so how do we activate healthy thoughts? Well, one is when a toxic thought comes through our, our mind, we just let it fly by. Don't allow it to become a, an imagination. Don't allow yourself to start thinking about it. Uh, and the other way is by letting God transform the way we think. So we, we take these minds, th- these thoughts, and we just throw them out. Um, but we also let God transform our mind. We allow the Holy Spirit thoughts to come in. And those are the ones we want to think about. Those are the ones we want to dwell on. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So, there you go. I like, you know, obviously the, um, the rice cake did not, did not do it for me, and I did go for the Oreo. But you know, the cool thing about it is, is, you know, when you're doing, like, some eating plan or whatever, it's not just, hey, don't have this. You know, yeah, there's a list of don'ts, but man, they give you a good list of do's. I even got a little recipe book that this lady put together with these really good recipes. So it's like, you know, don't just concentrate on what you're not supposed to think about. And uh, no, let's, let's focus on what we are supposed to think about. Let's focus on the things that bring life, you know, um, like Philippians 4, 8 says, okay, number two, the second thing that we want to, I want to talk about what we should activate is activating words of life. Okay. Yes. Come on. I li- okay, this book, Hung by the Tongue, that's really what it's about. Your thoughts turn into the words you say. Uh, and it's good. That's why I want y'all to, to read it. Grab a copy. So there's two types of words that I want to talk about today. In Proverbs 18.21, it says, The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. You know, in a time where we look around and we see death, destruction, discrimination, and deep, deep depression. Don't you think it's time we pay attention to the words that are coming out of our mouths? It's time. It's time to not just frivolously speak whatever comes to your head. It's time to put a filter. It's time to focus on the words we say. And I'm talking to myself too. So the first type of words that I want to talk about is words we speak to people. In Colossians 1, 6 and 8, 6 through 8, it says, The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives. Just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace, you learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant. And he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. What I want to highlight in this passage is this same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. How do you think 
we heard about salvation? How do you think we heard about deliverance? How do you think we heard about joy, the fruits of the Spirit, Jesus? Because someone way back then decided to open their mouth and speak some good stuff. They decided to tell of what God was doing in their life. And then someone else decided to tell of what God is doing in their life. And on and on and on, a couple thousand, few thousand years later, here we are sitting in this room because people decided to open their mouths. Isn't that such a powerful thought to think that we are sitting here today because of those disciples way back when? Because they decided to open up their mouths and speak? Okay, that blows me away. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let me ask you this. I'm full of questions today. I mean, because I want you to I want you to think about this. Don't just hear me talk, but ask yourself, what words am I spreading in my world? In, in your world, what words are you spreading in your world, in your home world, in your school world? In your church world, in your work world, in your social media world, what words are you spreading? Our words have the potential to purify the world around us, but it also has the potential to poison the world around us. And that is something that we cannot take lightly. It is something we have to take seriously. Our words matter. You know, I think of in uh, Numbers, the story of Joshua and Caleb and the other spies. I'm just going to give you a quick recap. So what happens is, is there Moses sends them out to go look at the land of Canaan because they are supposed to go in there and conquer that land. Well, they go in and they spy. They got, you got 12 spies and they, they looking at it and they, they get their report and come back. Um, and Joshua and Caleb were like, let's do this. You know, they come back, they're given the report. Joshua and Caleb are like, let's do this. Let's conquer this land. But the other 10 spies said this in 1328, it says, but the people living there are powerful and their towns are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. A little bit later, it says Caleb tried, so everybody gets in a huff like, oh my gosh, they get all scared because of these 10 spies given this fearful report, spreading fear, spreading discouragement. And it says in uh, verse 30, but Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Let's go at once and take the land. We can certainly conquer it. But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people saw were all the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants there, descendants of Anak. Next to them we felt like grasshoppers and that's what they thought too. Side note, they didn't think that. We find out later that they actually were scared of the Israelites. But because these 10 spies had fear, they were dwelling on those thoughts, they poisoned the children of Israel. And so guess what happened? Fear swept over them and they did not go get what God had for them at that time. And I just think of how... My words are that powerful. Your words are that powerful. No matter who is in your world and who is listening, if no one else is in your world and you are just you on a desert island, your words are still powerful because they affect you. And we have to take that seriously. Now, the words that we speak over situations can either bring fear or they can bring faith. Words that we speak over situations can bring encouragement or they can bring bring discouragement. We have to be aware of the words that we speak. You know, I also talked about my little boot camp. I told my trainer, I was like, hey, I'm I'm talking about you Saturday. (laughs) But, um, you know, I think about how these classes are for an hour. They are so hard. 
within the first 15 minutes, I'm usually seeing stars are feeling like I'm going to puke. Like it, it's hard stuff. And I can tell you the words that the trainer speaks out. And I hear every trainer at the gym. They all do it. They say things like, come on, you can do it. You're almost there. Like, okay, we're 15 minutes into the thing. We're not almost there, but keep saying it because maybe I'll believe it. <laughs> they was like, you're strong. You're powerful. You can do it. Push. Come on. Come on. I mean, it's nothing but encouragement that comes out of these women's mouth because they know the power of words. And I will push for 45 more minutes, sweating, feeling like I'm going to pass out. Why? Because of their words. You know, I tried to go to the gym with Brandon the other day. And I went to go run on the treadmill. Like, I couldn't even handle 15 minutes. I was struggling. And I'm like, I flip tires. You know, like, I do weights. Why I can't run on this little treadmill at like 3.0? I don't get this. And so I started talking to him about it. And I was like, I really think it was because my trainer wasn't there, like, telling me you can do it. And he's like, boo, you should have told me. He's like, I don't yell at you. I, you know, I don't I encourage you. But, you know, the word, again, the words we speak. So do we want to have words that have the power of the disciples? Or do we want to have words or use words that have the power of the, the ten spies? Amen. Me too. <laughs> okay. So the first word I wanted to, to talk about was the type of word is the word we speak to people. The second one is prayer. Prayer is mentioned throughout the Bible's, the Bible, way too many times for me to even count. It is a lot. Um, prayer is uh, a way we communicate with the Lord, and Jesus did it. Jesus prayed, and he tells us to pray. In Luke 5, 16, it says, but Jesus would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. He is our example. If we are Christians, we are Christ-like. He prayed. We pray, but it has power. And I wanted to read to y'all in the book of Matthew. And it is, you know, it's the word. I'm reading the word. It might um, take a little bit of time, but I just, I prayed about it. And the Lord told me to read the word, so I'm going to read the word. Okay, Matthew 6, 5 says, and y'all can look up on the screen. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth. That's all the reward that they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely, merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. And he doesn't stop there. He actually tells us how to pray. He says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. You know, I love how he gave us an example. He gave us a format, not that we need to use these words exactly, which if you do, it's a wonderful prayer to pray. But I, I see in this, uh, in this, some people call it the Our Father, some people call it the Lord's Prayer. But in this prayer right here that he gives us an example, he speaks of four things. He speaks of reverence. When we pray, he's like, hey, when you pray, reverence is important. Reverence is telling God how amazing he is. Because we, we have to start there. I mean, you're not going to pray to the mailman that comes knocking on your door, delivering your mail. No, he, he didn't, he, he didn't do anything. Well, he brought you your mail. And for some of us, that's really exciting. But anyway, my point is, is he didn't save your soul. The mailman didn't save your soul. God did. So when we come into prayer, the Lord's like, Hey, pray like this reverence. The second thing is request. He, he, in verse 10 and 11, it's, it's a request because God knows we have needs and he wants us to request those needs to him. It is important. He could have said, listen, when you pray, don't tell me what you need. I already know. And I really don't care. No. He's like, hey, when you pray, pray like this. And there's a request in there. 
the, the next thing is repentance. He know, he also knows that we would need to ask him to forgive us because we are flesh, we are human, and we would need forgiveness um, for our sins. So that's also important too. And the last thing that I really just caught when I was reading this, studying for this session, is rescue. Verse 13, and don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Okay, it is one thing to say, hey, Lord, can you provide? I need a new van. That, that's a great request, and it's a serious request. But it is another thing when you are in the dark, when you are in the depths of turmoil and you have no way out except rescue from Jesus. He put that in there, the word rescue, because he doesn't only want us to reverence him. He doesn't only want us to make a couple requests. He doesn't only want us to repent, but he wants us to cry out for a rescue that only he can do. We have, we may have looked for others to rescue us. We, we may have looked for things to rescue us, but the when we pray, he wants us to ask him to come to him to rescue us. Yes, amen. Why pray? Because first of all, he said to do it. <laughs> Three times he said, when you pray. He didn't say, if you feel like praying, uh, when the mood strikes, when you get the fancy. No, he said, when you pray. But he also said, pray like this. So not only did he say, when you pray, Pray like this. I could just beat that. It's so good. It's such a good word. He's God is so good. All right. And the other one I want to read, um, still talking about prayer is Matthew 7, verse 7. He says, keep on asking and you will receive what you have asked for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You're, you parents, okay, now he's talking to parents. How many of you, you're a parent? Just, just let me think. Mamas. Oh, we got a lot of mamas. All right, listen. You parents, you mamas, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father Give good gifts to those who ask. So what he's telling us here is keep on. Don't stop. Don't quit. Keep on. Activate your prayers. Activate your words. Because our Heavenly Father gives good gifts to those who ask. Moving on to number three. This is the, the message that Miss Karen preached for me. Uh, activate our gifts. Okay, so what was so cool about that? is like, I love talking about gifts. It's exciting for me. I think because, I, you know, I was 14 when I got saved and I very quickly found out my gifts. And I just felt so special that the God of the universe would create me with something to give to others. Like that just made me feel so special. And I hope that makes you feel special too, because we are. And, um, oopsies. Um, okay. So 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7 says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift is given to each of us. Why? So we can help each other. Now, I had that scripture, and then... Uh, I listened to that audio that we listened to last night and I was like, wow, I thought, like, I thought that was so cool. Um, because you know what? There is something inside of you and there is something inside of me and it is for the world around us. And I love how, how he, um, Dr. I wrote his name down somewhere. Yeah. Dr. Miles Monroe. Look, y'all all know because y'all probably went go look it up and listen to it last night. If you didn't, I think you should go listen to the whole thing because it was so good. Um, so it, it says in the scripture that I just read that there's different kinds of services. There are different kinds of service. So you know what? That tells me that we shouldn't compare. Because guess what? The hand is not going to look like the foot. And the nose isn't going to look like the ear. And they're not going to do the same thing. But I need them all. I need my nose and my ear and my foot and my hand. And so do you. 
And we know when we don't have something, one of those isn't working, we feel it. But we need it. Every gift is unique. Every gift is powerful. And every gift is important. And you know why we have it? To help each other. It's such a beautiful thing. I love how God does that. Um, you know, I had to call a friend recently and apologize. Um, just something that had happened. And I was like, so nervous. And this, I mean, I've been friends with her for like over 10 years. And I still felt very, very nervous. I had nerves in my stomach. But her gift of mercy was so awesome for me when I called to apologize. And, you know, a lot of us have that gift and we don't see it. If you're a forgiving person, that's a gift of mercy. And you need to recognize it, appreciate it, and thank God for it. Because not everybody has that. I can tell you that. And, um, you know, I think about, you know, all the women that have come up to me and talked to me about Ms. Gail. Her gift of hospitality and encouragement will go on for generations and generations. Our gift, I needed that from her. And there's a lot of you in here that got to experience that and y'all needed that. And guess what? You're going to pass that on. You know, I, um, I grabbed my notes that I took last night because I just wanted to go over a few things about gifts that Tanya said. And honestly, um, if those of you that weren't here, y'all really, really, really got to hear that message. The truth that she spoke was so, so good. Life-changing, actually. And so she talked about gifts. She, she talked about how everyone possesses gifts. She talked about um, that they're inherent and they're irrevocable, can't go away. Um, I love, love, love the part when she said that your seasons may change. And that's, that's an opportunity for your gifts to be refined. That was, that's so powerful. Um, and she also talked about how when we discover our purpose, we'll discover our gifts. And I'm telling you, when I see a woman discover the gift that God has put inside of her, she comes to life. And it is beautiful. And even in turmoil and even in troubles and even in trials, that gift is still there and she can still operate in her gift. And this morning while I was Praying and going over this, I felt the Lord wanted me to tell you, ladies, that do not let divorce steal your gift. You are still gifted even through divorce. You are still gifted even though someone did you wrong. You are still gifted even though you've been abused. Even though people have mistreated you, you are still gifted. That gift is still inside of you. And God always, always, always wants to use it. So let's remember that. I like how Dr. Miles Monroe said, you're a package sent to earth. And then he says, to meet the needs of creation. So we're all here to meet each other's needs. And that is, again, that is such a beautiful thing. Okay, I should, like, I need a bigger table. Next time I might get two tables, you know. I should have should have kept that stool up here. Um, I just got so much stuff. All right, so activate our gifts. I think, oh, there was a scripture. There was one more scripture I wanted to say. But in Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago so we can use our gifts. The last thing I want to talk to you about, and uh, Tanya hit on that last night, is activate good friendships. So important. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better. For a triple braided cord is not easily broken. What do we gain from good friendships? In this scripture, it tells us that we gain success. We gain help to get back up. We gain comfort in trials and victory in the fight. Who has those friends? Think about that. Who? How many of us in here have friends? Like that. I see some hands. Oh, I see some pointing. I love that. That's right. Well, y'all got to let y'all girls know you are a good friend. 
Let them know you are, you are a good friend. Now, sometimes we need a friend who will be there, like in the boot camp. I'm just going to, that, that's where I'm at, y'all. So yeah, just like my husband, he talks about hunting and fishing and football. I am doing this boot camp, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, but, you know, there's this thing we do where we go run a lap around the parking lot. And uh, when I first started out, I was usually the last one because, uh, you know, I'm new at this. And so what they do is she, our trainer says, go back and get them. What these ladies do is they run, they do their lap. Okay, they're exhausted. They do their lap. And then they come back and get you and run alongside of you. And I remember the first time that I really could have just sat there and cried because it just blessed me. I'm like, thank you. Thank you. You know, because I could barely breathe. And I'm just so happy that they came and got me. Like, it made me feel so good. It made me, And it helped me to run the race. It helped me to finish. And I also think about when I was, and I thought, I can't wait till I can run my lap and go back and get them. Well, when I first started, I didn't have an, I didn't have words. Like I could finish my lap, but I was so out of breath. I just go get them. Like I'm giving you the nod because words can't come out of my mouth right now. There's no breath in my lungs to do that. But you know, it makes me think about how sometimes we are here to cheer our friends on loudly. Sometimes we're here to cheer them on quietly. And there's a poem that just really explains this. It's small and it's short and simple. And I want to, I want to read it to you. It says, when the words have run out and the energy has gone, I will stand close beside you all the day long. As I take hold of your hand, I softly whisper a prayer. As your eyes fill with tears, you know, I'll always be there. You know, the truth is, is sometimes that's all we can do. All we can do is sit there and just hold their hand or pray silently for them. Sometimes we're miles away, but a good friend is going to just send some prayers, maybe a letter, maybe a text, but may- maybe it's just, so- just prayers. And that's important. We don't all have to be loud and cheery and as loud and cheery as I am. There are many times where I'm in a situation where I have nothing, no words, nothing, just space, just me taking up space on side of you to help you go through what you're going through. And that's important. So when you find a friend that helps you succeed, when you find a friend that helps you get back up, when you find a friend that gives you comfort in your trials, and when you find a friend who helps you give, get victory in the fight, keep her. Keep her, keep her, keep her. Be loyal. Love her. Get her back. Don't let people talk about her. Don't, don't you, (laughs) don't talk about her. Don't disgrace her, but keep her, honor her. Ask her to forgive you when you do something wrong, because we all going to do that. And let me tell you this, for those of you who are not married, I need every single lady and teenagers. You teenagers, y'all listen up. This is for you. I'm calling y'all out. College students, anybody not married, when you are looking to get married to a man, let that be the litmus test. Does he help me succeed? Does he help me get back up or does he kick me while I'm down? Does he bring comfort in trials? And does he help me have victory in this fight? That is the kind of man that you want to spend your time with. Don't even waste your time spending time going on dates with these guys that don't do that. Don't waste your time. I told a lady one time, and I know it was the Holy Spirit. She was talking about a man she was with. And she's like, I know he's not the right one, but he just kind of fills a space that I enjoy. And I was like, yeah. I get that. I've been there. But he's taken up somebody else's space. And so when you waste your time and your space with someone that's not who God would have put in your life, he's taken someone else's space. So let's keep Jesus in that space. And then whenever it's time, Jesus is going to grab his hand and put him right on the side. So that's a word for everyone. (laughs) 
And ladies that are married, I know there's some of y'all out there and you're like, that ain't my husband. No, it's not. Well, let me tell you this. Be that kind of wife and pray this over him. And in due time, I have seen it time and time and time again, this will become him. I, I, I'm, I'm sure of it. Okay, so moving forward. What do we need to activate? Healthy thoughts, words of life, our gifts, and good friendships. So we want to just recap. In other words, for activate us to switch on. What is it today that I'm talking about? that the Holy Spirit drops something in you that you need to switch on. Maybe it's something that was on and you switched it off. What is it? Is it a gift? Is it your thought life? Is it words? What is it? What's something that God wants to start up? Maybe there is something that we talked about today or this weekend and it hadn't even been started ever, ever, ever. And you're like, I want to start those good thoughts up. I want to start those good words up, right? What is it? Think about it. Label it. Acknowledge it. And your gifts. We, you know, we have the next steps class over here where um, every Sunday after church, they have one. You go and <laughs> tell you, it tells you about our church. But guess what? It tells you about you. They have a spiritual gifts test you can take in there. And it will show you the God designed gifts by asking you a series of questions and good friendships. I get that there are times in life where you may only have like one friend. Maybe you're in an uprooted season in your life and you don't have many around you. I'm telling you, I was there as much as I like to talk and as bold as I can be. There was a season in my life where I had, I, I it was like they were few and far between. I had, you know, anyway, life situation, but I prayed. I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, and God overflowed me with wonderful women in my life that I'm just overjoyed with. So don't get discouraged. Pray and pursue. Maybe you got to be the woman that pursues somebody. I look, I've pursued people, and they gave me the hand. Like, hey, can I have your number? I can exchange. Yeah, well, and I'm busy. I don't, get, you know, whatever the reason is. I, I've gotten the stiff arm. It's okay. I mean, you know, I've gotten people that were my friends, and then all of a sudden, they weren't. It happens, but don't quit pursuing. Don't let it discourage you. Keep on. Um, also, I wanted to, you know, make a note. I am hoping that none of this caused anyone to feel pressure. Because when we talk about activate, I know some are thinking, you don't know how busy I am. You don't know everything I have on my plate. Well, guess what? If you activate some good thoughts, it'll probably take some things off your plate. You know what I'm saying? If you activate good words, it probably could take some things off your plate. But I'm not saying busy yourselves because I'm again, no, we don't want to just get busy, busy, busy. But we want to come to the Lord and say, Lord, what do you want from me? What, and, and even in your gift, you might be a busy woman. I mean, my goodness, I, I love to teach. I do. You stick my four kids in front of me and I'm homeschooling them and I feel like I'm the worst teacher in the world. The Lord had to remind me like, no, babe, I gifted you in that area. Different season, right? Refining me in this season. And so just because it doesn't look like I thought it was supposed to look in 2018 and 19 doesn't mean that I'm not operating in the gift that God has for me, right? Y'all know what I'm saying. Okay, so what I want to do right now is I want everybody to stand because we're going to, we're going to just, this is like a, I'm activating. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready. God, I want you to activate me. I'm ready to turn on something. I'm ready to get going. I'm ready to start up. This is my time. And like Sister Linda said, it is time to shine, but not shine so people can just be like, Oh, I like your hair, your clothes. You're so pretty. No, Jesus inside of us. It's time for that to shine. This, this is our time. And so what I want to do is I want to just, if you're comfortable, you don't have to. If you're comfortable, let's just close our eyes and lift up our hands. And let's just dedicate ourselves to the Lord. And and I'm just going to pray. And as I pray, I want you to pray and use your words and tell the Lord, Lord, I am here. I dedicate myself to you. Let's just take a moment to dedicate yourself to the Lord. Lord, I dedicate myself to you to be and do 
who you've called me to be, to do what you've called me to do. Lord, I choose to activate the things in my life that you are calling me to activate, Lord. And just, 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 just receive it. Just receive the grace. Receive the grace to, to start up. Receive the grace to get going. Receive the grace to take action. And I'm going to pray for you, Father. I pray for every single person in here, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that as they make a decision, God, to activate, to get, to take action of the areas in their life that you have spoken to them, Lord God. I pray for grace. I pray for strength. I pray that hope would be restored. I pray, Father God, that the dead areas in their lives would come to life, Father God. I pray as they take action, Father God, that they are fulfilled again, Father God. I pray that every substance and every person, that every substitute that they have used to fill the place of fulfillment, Father God, would be gone as their fulfillment comes from walking and being who you have called them to be Father God. Lord, I thank you for these ladies. Lord, I pray, Father God, that every woman in here, Father God, would find a good friend or a handful, Father God. Give them good friends, Lord. The ladies that long for these relationships in their lives, Father God, I pray, Father God, that you would activate those friendships in their lives, Father God. And I pray for every every marriage in here, Father God, that what we talked about, Father God, that they would stand back to back, that they would be successful. Bring each other success, that they would fight the fight together, Father God. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for this weekend. I thank you, Father God, for everything that was instilled into these women, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that none of it would return void. None of your words would return void, but it would go down deep, God, and it would accomplish everything that you have set it out to accomplish, Father. I thank you, Father God, that we your daughters we want you God we want you Lord we want your presence Lord as your daughters we want you and your presence Father and we thank you Lord all together let's thank the Lord thank you Lord thank you for this weekend thank you for salvation God thank you for loving us God thank you for the relationships we have God thank you for your word Father God Lord, we thank you, Lord, for joy. We thank you for peace, Father. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.